back here is fine. Okay, great. Then we'll just do without earbuds. How are you? I am doing very well. I'm doing very well. Uh, it is about 10 o'clock here in the UK. Uh, yeah, I was just about saying you guys were on it late, huh? Yes. Well, yeah, I mean, I've, um, you know, I, I, I'm a full time mental health therapist working with children. So this is oh, my. Beautiful. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah. So I, I do my clinics in the morning. So when everyone goes to bed, my kids, my wife, then I can do my hobby at night. <laughs> then you can do your thing. Do my thing. Yes. Then you can do your show. <laughs> yeah, I can do this. So yeah, I, and I, and I and I started this during lockdown, and and it's I can, yeah, it's been fun just hearing the stories, and um, you know, putting a face. I mean, as I said, I, I most of us even know how you look like. We hear, we know your music, but we don't. We, I know. We didn't. <laughs> yes, yeah. Let um, me tell you one thing. It's so funny when it was this big website, uh, one of those soul R and B websites, and they put out a picture of us, and they're like, "This is all the hits that we're doing," and people were like. No way. Yeah. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Don't tell me these two white boys from Denmark did know all those records. No way. <laughs> yeah. I mean, being British, well, I'm I'm British. I, I went to university in America, but the, there's a lot of soul, you know, we from George and Michael. Um, we know the Beatles, they enjoyed sort of rock, rock and roll. Oh, so yeah. it's understandable here in the UK. I mean, most of our DJs play soul and R&B and stuff and hip hop. Yeah. So, but I know in America, yeah. it's very much, it's very different. So, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if we're recording, but I yeah, can, yeah, yeah. We I can, can tell it, yeah. you if you want. Yeah, well, this, you know, since we're touching that subject, you know, we came over here, you know. Well, I got to go further back because, you know, my original start to the music industry and everything is because of these two guys here at my desk. You okay. know, I was a DJ for many years. And in 1989, uh, I became third in the world in uh, the world championship in mixing and scratching, which was DMC. It was held at Royal Albert Hall. Okay, here you know, it was it. England. Who had yeah, world, yeah, they had their world championship, and um, one of the judges would, were was DJ Red Alert. Oh, okay. And that's really the beginning of my career because uh, you know I lived with my parents. I was so young, so I just went back to my little farmer town in Denmark, and it truly was. And then I got a phone call from Flavor Unit, and that was DJ Red Alert's new management company. He had with a guy called Dave Funkenklein. And he said, uh, we really like that show you did. We're doing a tour with Queen Latifah, Jungle Bros, Chill Rob G, and True Mathematics. And we want you to DJ on that tour, but not just do your show. We want you to also be Latifah's DJ and Chill Rob G's DJ and True Mathematics DJ. And I mean, it was just, what? Say that again? You know, it was such an incredible, incredible honor. And I flew to New York, and I, for me, I was just into the music. You know, my my first experience with music was Grandmaster Flash, The Wheels of Steel. Wow. And um, ever since I heard that record, it was just, that's it. And, but I didn't know the culture of hip hop. I didn't know really what it expressed. I just liked the music and I could hear what they were talking about, but I was just, the beats and everything was really what I was focused on. I came to New York and I stayed with Audio 2 and MC Light. <laughs> wow. And, uh, yeah, they were kind of helping me out a little bit because they were friends with Red Alert and stuff like that. But I mean, it was like, whoa. All of a sudden, I was in it. And I was in Brooklyn, Flatbush Avenue in the late 80s. And, and my mom was like, how is it? And I'm like, <laughs> quite different. <laughs> <laughs> and doing that whole venture, that was my whole point because we're touching this subject of, you know, being a little white boy in hip hop music. We really, it didn't exist. It was there were no M&Ms mm -hmm. at all. There were like, you know, a few <clears throat> third base <clears throat> later yeah, yeah, on yeah. Mm -hmm. had a, a, a white kid, but it was really unusual. And, uh, you know, I'm so thankful to this day that Latif and, and Red Alert gave me this experience because I would go on this tour and I would tour in a lot in Europe too. But a lot of times when I went on stage, I got booed. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! In, in Europe or in the US? Well, because you know they were here to see like straight out the jungle. The team was wearing African costumes. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. You know, jungle boys were like in full jungle gear and stuff like that. So I had to scratch and scratch and mix real fast, and I was like, "Oh, okay, he's cool." But <laughs> and it came up to me actually a little bit on the tour bus. I remember after many months of touring, you know, I was just like, and also experiencing, you know, New York. I got shot at in New York at a what. Yeah, at a club, where, you know, Red Alert had to spin in different clubs around in New York, but hip-hop 
clubs in like 1989 were like, it was gritty. And, you know, yeah, there was someone who wasn't feeling the DJ, you know, and I just, you know, it's just a really rough experience coming from Denmark. And I remember saying to the Tifa, you know what? After we've been touring for a while, I said, I don't know, maybe, <laughs> maybe I should not be doing this. Yeah, did, 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 it, did you get, did the bullet actually hit you? No, we, I, I didn't get hit. No, I didn't get hit. You know, the, the promoter just told me that there's something going on. Just people in the crowd getting rowdy and, you know, and also, yeah. also what's this white boy doing up there kind of thing, you know, <laughs> what kind of oh. thing. It was just, it was just a, one of those, like, you know, it was a tough little feeling back. And, you know, yeah. it's not like England where we used to different cultures in hip hop. You know, yeah. most hip hop in England were mixed and stuff like that. You know, it was never really an issue because, you know, we, as a, as a country, England, Denmark, especially Denmark, Yeah. You know, it's just more natural. But oh, in New York, no, not in, not in late 80s. It yeah, was, yeah, yeah. It was unusual. Um, but anyways, I just remember he was like, oh, yeah, you got to duck down on the turntables, you know. Just stay <laughs> safe. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And I'm like, have my needles up. And I just hear over me. And I wish I could tell you some Superman story, but I <laughs> crawled on all fours out <laughs> and called my mom from the phone box as we had in New York back then and, and said, I'm coming home. So I had experienced some stuff and I just remember saying to the chief, you know, I was like, no, I love this music so much. I really, I, I mean, I, I'm, I am so into this music and I, I, I live and breathe it, but you know, I'm just starting to sense maybe not. And she took my hands, she <laughs> my hands and she goes, don't you ever let the color of your skin make it determine any decisions in life for you. And it was so reversed because, you know, hey, wait, I'm the white. Okay, but she used some of the experiences she felt in being in a, a, a female white world or something. Yeah, yeah. And it was just, it was just incredible. And she, it, that was really the moment where I'm like, okay, okay, thank you. Because, you know, I respect her so much. So I owe so much to to Red Alert and the teeth of my, and Jungle Brothers for the beginning of my career. Yeah, well, I mean... It it'd be great to go back to the fact that you're from, uh, well, I always ask my guests where they were born and raised. Uh, you've said Denmark. Now, um, most of us know Denmark as the home of Lego and, and Danish <laughs> pastry. So, <laughs> so, so, you know, outside of, and, and, cows, and, you know, I'm a little... Let me bring out my Lego here for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm surprised you don't have a big Lego yeah. mix at the back. You get my say, hey, can you get me some Legos, please? <laughs> And as a Liverpool supporter, the, the home of Carlsberg beer. But what was it like growing up uh, in Denmark? <laughs> I am, you know, you know, Liverpool. You know, my my best friend supports Liverpool. You know, yeah, I'm Mowgli, myself, Madrid, yeah. and my yeah, and my again, Mowgli was amazing. And you, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. you had some other things. Yeah, and we had some, Daniel. Agar. Maybe it was the biggest one, but Daniel Agger. I was just about to say, great yeah. defensive player. Yeah, he was. Yeah. Oh my god, my team is Madrid. So. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so we're good. Yeah. But, but what was um, it like growing up in Denmark? You know, very, you know, I'm from the northern part of Denmark, which is kind of like, it's called Greece, Jutland. In Greenland, or is it? Yeah, yeah, Jutland is called, yeah. So you got like where the capital is, you know, Copenhagen. Copenhagen we're yeah. not, we're the farmers. Okay. We're uh, Jutland, a lot of cows, wow. a lot of farms. And uh, I grew up with very traditional home. My dad was a, uh, Uh, working at the uh, un- professor at the university and stuff like that. Very academic family. So when I said, "Yeah, I'm going to New York to make beats," <laughs> just not at all registering. No idea what I was talking about. But they got used to the sound of this because I was practicing eight hours a day in my room on my turntable. So you oh, know, but-, but growing up, really traditional upbringing in Denmark, and uh, you know, I remember. Around those years, 11, 12, 13, 14, you you, you start to want to fit in, yeah. right? So teamwork, you find your little clique. And it was really hard in Denmark because first I was like, you know, it's a little bit of a tough guy. You are in the farmers. You're always like, you know, <laughs> farmer boys always, you know, farmer boys. Yeah. And uh, so I was kind of like with the rock, you know, heavy metal, uh, the bike kind of thing. And I'm like listening to the music, you know, and I'm like, this is t- Terrible. Wow. So I left that, and then I went into other posse that was kind of like they were listening to Wham. Okay. Like Pink Shirt song and stuff, and I'm like, 
this is terrible. <laughs> and I had such a hard time fitting in that I kind of hanging out with people who listen to The Cure and Six mm. Pistols and stuff like that. And I just, I didn't, you know, I was okay, but I was coming home at night sometimes going, what's wrong with me? How come I can't, like, mm. why, why am I fitting in? And that's the moment when I heard on Danish national radio, Grandmaster Flash, The Wheels of Steel. And I can't explain you why, but... Wow. It was just a moment for me. I was like, that's it. And I call all my friends. And there's one friend in particular who said, oh, that's that new style from New York. It's called hip hop. And I went all in. And you got to figure out what to do. Are you going to make graffiti? Are you going to rap? <laughs> Are you going to break dance? And very fast, I found out I was not good at any of those. But music spoke to me. And I saw all the rappers had DJs behind them. And I start studying, you know, all the DJs like, you know, Howie T and Cash Money and Jesse Jeff and Mixmaster Ice from UTFO. And wow. I got really into studying all the styles, scratching and mixing. And that that was just that became my life. <laughs> hey, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for being a part of Halftime Chat. Please remember to subscribe, share and comment. But most importantly, why don't you become a member of Halftime Chat? We've got amazing videos, amazing perks, and um, being able to support the channel. But anyway, thanks for watching. Take care. I never participated in that kind of age. I'm somewhere in between. Or even loving us on Wish I Did an Issue um, with. came out the heat of the moment. See, I've gotten the business out of the show. What was it like growing up? It is a she's still making an impact on the street. Four houses down. I'm not, I have a couple of friends. Trying to get this one and that one. Well, that works for you, but just for me, I'm... Oh, I'm no, 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 okay, okay. They don't understand what Jodeci boys boys and men at all. Experience for you, and you can act. Oh. Play it. I mean, I was, I, I love, I love all different jobs. <laughs>